So here you can see a little illustration of all those tiny, tiny little blood cells giving all their oxygen to the cells and then going back into the vein. So then they go back into the veins and they go back towards the heart. And when they reach the heart, what happens to them? They go back into the body, right? But wait a second. Constriction. So, what causes a blood vessel to get like that? 
Mm. So you have to stay in a very narrow window. Uh, so even if you get a fever, if you go up above like a, what is it like 40 degrees Celsius or something, you're in really bad shape. It's not a good thing at all. Mm. So your body is built to maintain homeostasis to stay the same. So if you start overheating, of course, you're going to sweat and the sweat will come on your skin and it will cool your body. That's the idea, right? That's how the body is designed. So if you put heat, you may also see sweating. We might even observe some of that in our second class period. And then our body temperature may rise. If you're putting enough heat that the sweating does not cool you, the body temperature is going to go up. Just like if you're on a very hot day in India or in Bangladesh, I imagine same. If it's very hot, though you're sweating, you cannot maintain coolness. You're so hot. That is the way if you apply enough heat to the body, your temperature will rise even though you're sweating. And that's okay because God designed the body temperature. God designed certain things to go along with raising the body temperature. That's why when you get sick, you get fever. It's because when you get fever, it cooks the bacteria and the microorganisms, whatever small, small things are making you sick, they can't handle high temperature. They'll die off. So that's why the body will automatically put a fever if it feels like something is invading. So when we feel like something is invading, we can wait for that to come, or we can give ourselves a fever, and nicely we'll get well before we get very sick. It works. But we are afraid of fever, no? Because we don't understand it, and nobody likes to be sick. But if we use hot to create a fever in a controlled way, we can boost our immune system and we can get well much simpler. Makes sense? Okay, that wasn't in my lecture, but anyway, it's the truth. Okay, so here's now another example. What happens if we put cold? That bad blood vessels in the skin are doing what? They're tight. What happens down the floor? Dilation, right. This is because your body is built to survive. If you are out in the middle of Alaska, in the middle of the winter, and you don't have proper clothing, right? Your body needs to stay warm at the core. And so, your blood vessels, your skin will, con the, all the blood vessels in the skin will contract, constrict, all the pores in the skin, skin will close, and you will put the blood towards the center of your body so that your heart, your lungs, all of your internal organs and your brain will stay warm as long as possible. So I'm going to read it. But we can also use this for healing. Have you ever noticed that when somebody gets injured, like suppose you get you, you twist your ankle, what happens next? It's fading. And then what happens? Swelling. Big. Because of course all the blood is rushing to that spot and trying to do something. But sometimes it's too big, too much swelling. And then we can apply ice. And if we apply ice, it helps to control that swelling a little bit so that it doesn't do damage before healing can start. And of course, this can also be used for something else. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So when we apply cold for a short time, it makes the blood circulate quicker. Immediately, if your body sense is cold, its first idea is to warm up, right? So the blood's gonna start going. But if you keep on going, it's gonna switch that. So it makes you feel warmer. Have you ever tried something very strange? Taking a hot bath and then taking cold afterwards? Mm. If you take a hot bath, you feel hot. As soon as you stop, you feel cold. But if you take a hot bath and you put cold on you, you'll feel so cold and then you'll feel warm. Because it will immediately close all the pores in your skin and the heat will stay inside. Now if you soak in that cold water for a long time, you're not going to feel warm. But if you quickly put cold, it will actually make you feel warmer for longer. That's how it works. It doesn't always make sense to us. Nobody likes, well I can't say nobody, but if you're cold and you just took a nice hot bath, you don't want to put gold, right? You don't feel to put gold, but it will make you feel warmer for longer. Okay, so it makes the blood vessels on the surface get smaller. We call that 
Constriction. Constriction. Yes, somebody said it. So if they get bigger, we call it? Dilation. Dilation. Yeah. Okay. So it also raises your metabolism. What is your metabolism? It's a kind of a complex thing, but it's how your body fuels every cell. So how much, how it burns the nutrition, how it burns the energy in your cell. So if if you are in a house and suddenly it gets cold, the sun sets, what are you going to do to the fire? If you have a fire to heat your house, you're going to put more wood in the fire, right? And make it get a little warmer, a little bigger. Your body is doing the same thing. If you start getting cold, immediately it's going to start burning more glucose and all those things in yourself to keep you warm. Just makes sense. It's simple, really, if you understand it. God is working to keep you healthy and warm, and He designed our bodies so that even after sin, they could adapt, they could adjust, they could survive. Mm. Very beautifully. So you will raise your metabolism, you will make, you might even feel more energetic, because your body is burning, burning, burning all that energy to keep you warm. Okay, so here is a picture of your skin. I'm sure this will also be in your anatomy class somewhere. But in this skin, we can see some many different things. Many different things. Here's a sweat gland. So that's what's going to make the sweat if you get too hot. And this is a little muscle. This is a hair. And this is a tiny muscle. What does that muscle do? It works. Mostly you know when you're cold. We, we call it an erector pili muscle because it makes this hair go stand straight up. And you know that that's happening. If you get cold, all the hair will stand up and all the pores will go. That's what these muscles do. And if they get cold, they will work. Nicely they will work. You can't see them, they're too small. Although if you were to really dissect the body, you might be able to. But they're pretty small, but you can see them work. Okay. <coughs> Once in a while, I should make sure I'm covering everything in my notes, right? Okay. So when we apply coal for a long time, mm -hmm. the effect is a little different than if you just put a quick amount of coal. So if I put a quick amount of coal, my body does not feel in danger. It will just close the pores and it will be okay. But if you put cold for a long time, slowly the blood will slow down. Mm -hmm. It will get slower and slower. And then you'll start releasing the cold. And you're, you know, you have muscles inside your blood vessels, right? That constrict and dilate. But if you ever try to do like this, how long can you do like that? A minute? And then you're tired, right? Your blood vessels are like that. They'll constrict for a while. And they'll be like this. And finally they're like, we just can't. We just can't. And they relax and open up. So the blood vessels on the surface will get bigger, which then your blood will start cooling faster. So then your body temperature will start going down. And down. And down. Now if you're overheating, you might feel happy that your body temperature is dropping for a little while. But if you're in the cool winter and your body's temperature starts doing that, you are in trouble because you can't live if it goes too low. So it will drop and then you'll start doing something else. Your body is made to create heat through shivering. If you ever go inside of a big refrigerator or a freezer, you'll feel that. If you ever go to a very cold place and there's no way to get warm, you'll feel it. Hopefully nobody feels that way right now. But uh, it will be very intense. If your body is seriously getting chilled, you will shiver and shiver and you won't be able to stop. And finally, if you get cold enough, you will get sleepy. And if you go to sleep, mm. finish. You'll wake up on the resurrection morning. That's how, <laughs> that's how the body works. So if we have used this knowledge, we understand that cold and heat are good. Right amount of heat and the right amount of cold to dilate and constrict.
We talked about legal, but what happens if you go back and forth? So heat, it'll make the blood vessels open, right? Mm. And then cold, it will make it go closed. Mm. And then you want to get the heat and it opens. And then you go to the cold and it closes. What does that do? It moves the circulation even faster, right? It's like, you know, if you just open the blood vessels, the blood will come more. But then if you push it again, it closes, open it again, it'll dry and push it and close it. Then what? Heart. Then what? Heart. Heart. Then? Love. 